God, praise God, and welcome to the City of David weekly Bible study. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I don't know about you, but I'm just excited about what God will do in our service. It was an interesting day. Uh, we was able to um, be with the Roseboro family, and we was able to give the internment on today for Brother Denzel, and that brought about certain emotions, and so it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, if you don't mind, would you just begin to prepare your hearts, prepare your minds, prepare your focus, that tonight might be a night of study, but also a night of fun and joy. And so if you don't mind, uh, would you just uh, begin to turn your Bibles with me to um, Luke 4, Luke 4. We're going to be in Luke 4 on tonight, and I believe God has a word for us. Amen. And so Luke 4 on tonight, tonight we're talking about uh, the oil, the oil. You probably have heard that phrase um, in many different church settings and we want to talk about the dimensions of the oil um, everybody don't have the oil amen but we just believe tonight that God's going to speak to our hearts about the oil Luke 4 amen amen praise God and so let's have a good time and study on tonight let's give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's pray. Merciful God, we thank you for today's journey. God, we thank you for this week's journey. We realize, God, if it had not been for you, we don't know where we would be and how we would be. So we just give you glory on tonight, God. God, we need to hear a word from you. So much is coming for our peace. So much is coming for our joy that we need to truly hear a word from you. And so speak tonight, God. Bring us all together that this might be meaningful fellowship. I come against anything, God, that may try to confuse us and come between us in this moment. Anything online, any intruder, God, of the enemy that might try to uh, distract us. I come against it right now, God. And I believe by faith, God, that we will leave this experience better. So we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. And so tonight we're talking about the oil, the oil, the oil in Luke 4. Amen. Luke 4. Now, let me just give some background. Uh, we are at the point now where Jesus is getting ready to start ministry. Um, this is Jesus at the point where he is approximately 30 years of age. And he's getting ready to start ministry. And I want you to see the function that the oil plays in his life and plays on his ministry. Amen. And what I need you to understand is that uh, the oil has different uh, connotations in scripture. You may be in a church setting and you may hear people talk about so-and-so has the oil. When they're referencing the oil, there are two purposes of the oil. There's the purpose of healing and deliverance. You recall when the parable of the Good Samaritan, when he was um, beaten and left on the side of the road, the Bible says that uh, they placed him uh, at the end. And when they placed him in the end, he had... Uh, the innkeeper to use oil to bandage up his wounds. And that is why when we talk about healing, you may see us declare that we need to go get some oil that we might bandage or heal somebody of their body. But in this context where we're talking about the oil, it's not something that can be bought. Amen, somebody. The oil that we are referring in our text on tonight is the oil that can only come from God, thus the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so that is what we are talking about tonight when we declare the oil. 
And when we have the oil or when we have the Holy Spirit, the Bible teaches us that we can do many things. Amen. And so we want to talk about the oil on tonight and let's see where God lead us. Uh, tonight, I know we're in Acts. I mean, I know we're in Luke 4, but I want us to go to uh, Exodus 30. I want us to go to Exodus 30, and I want to highlight the difference um, the difference between the oils and the connotations of the oil. Um, you should know that um, in our text, Jesus is getting ready to start his ministry, and he already has the oil. Because if you recall, when he was baptized, the Bible says that that was the only time on earth that the Trinity was present. God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You recall when he was baptized, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus. And so Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit from that very moment. And so every day that Jesus walked on earth, he had the Holy Spirit. And because he had the Holy Spirit, it is but biblical scholars uh, assertion that that is why he was able to do his ministry as that is why he did it with such excellence. And he was not um, distracted or brought down is because he had the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so when you get to Exodus uh, 30, uh, verse 22, the Bible says, then the Lord said to Moses, take the following fine spices shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant calamus, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary she shekel, and a hint of olive oil. Verse 25, make these into a sacred anointed oil, a fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer. It would be sacred anointing oil. And so I just wanted to highlight the fact that when we say the oil, the oil is two connotations. There's the oil that we use for healing, and then there's the oil that we say the Holy Spirit. And when you have the oil, the Holy Spirit, you can do things everybody else can't do. That's why you can see some people and they can pray and you can feel the prayer. Somebody may come behind that person and say the exact same prayer. But you don't necessarily feel it like you felt it the first time with this person. It, it will be said that th that person had the oil. You ever heard somebody sing and it just sounds so angelic that you and somebody else can sing the same song. And yet when you heard this person sing it, you just felt something different. Goosebumps. That person has the oil. That means that person is being powered by that person is being pushed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let's turn to Luke 4 and uh, let's see what God has for us. I, I apologize. Before we go there, I want you to turn, turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy. Turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6. I apologize. Deuteronomy 6. Turn your Bibles with me to Deuteronomy 6. That's the book after Numbers. The book after Numbers. Amen. And the book before Joshua. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6, and I want you to write these down. Please do, if you can, write these down on tonight because it's going to make sense. Deuteronomy 6, and let's read 6 and 13. Amen. Deuteronomy 6 and 13. Fear the Lord your God, serve him only, and take your oath in his name. Amen. Let's also read Deuteronomy 6 and 16. 6 and 16, Deuteronomy. Do not put the Lord your God to the test as you did at Messiah. Amen? And then finally, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Chapter 8, verse 3. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known. To teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Amen. So Deuteronomy 6 and 13, Deuteronomy 6 and 16, and Deuteronomy 8 and 3. And based off of that last verse, 8 and 3, we don't live off the tangible stuff that many of us chase after in life. We live off of 
every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And when, and when you really embrace that in your walk with God, it will let you know that everything you have and everything you will get, it comes from a direct word from God. There was nothing in creation and God spoke and there it was, right? And so it lets us know God's words can create, right? There was no man and God said, let there be man and there was man. There was no one man and God said, it's too much for Adam. I got to create a helpmate for him. And God said, let there be one man and there was one man, right? And so there was no light. God said, let there be light and there was light, right? And so if God's words can create, and you and I profess to have God in us, then when you and I have God in us, then that means that our words can create. And that's why you got to be careful what you speak over your own life. Because, and it does not even matter when you by yourself, you got to be careful because even if nobody else is around to hear you, you can hear you. I'm talking to somebody already, right? You can hear yourself. And that's why you got to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a confession, y'all. I talk to myself. Amen. And I even answer myself. Self, D'Amico, what are you doing? I don't know. Right? I talk to myself, right? And when I'm by myself, I don't wait for the church or y'all to be around for my amen corner. I talk to myself. D'Amico, no weapon form against you shall prosper. And every lying tongue that come up against you shall be condemned. D'Amico, you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. D'Amico, all things will work together for your good because nothing is too hard for God. Right? Beloved, D'Amico, I pray that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. Jesus came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I talk to myself, y'all. And that's why I don't need necessarily other people to pump me up. Right? Because I've already been in the word even before I encounter people. Right? I don't need you to tell me that I was wonderfully, wonderfully, wonderfully and fearfully made because I've been telling myself that in my quiet time. Demico, you were wonderfully and fearfully made by God. Right? And so you got to learn how to talk to yourself and speak in your own life. Right? What you want to see. Right? You got to learn how to talk to yourself and speak in your own life what you and what I've learned is when you start talking to yourself, amen, you get boldness to say the same thing in front of people, right? Because you're not bragging on your ability, you're bragging on God, amen, right? And so man cannot live off of bread alone, man must live off of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Because when the tangible stuff is gone, what we will have is the word, amen. The word will never fade. The word cannot be, tangible stuff can be stolen. The word of God cannot be stolen. Tangible stuff can be burnt up. The word of God cannot be burnt up, right? And that's why if you ain't holding on to nothing, you better hold on to the word of God. Amen? And so we are in Luke 4 tonight. And I need you to know that in Luke 3, we see that Jesus now identifies with those believers that are walking in earth because he was baptized. And he was baptized as a symbolic uh, symbolic symbol, right? That he is now walking in the authority of God, right? He was baptized. And so he relates, Jesus relates to us because he was baptized, right? Now he's about to relate to us by being tempted. I don't care who you are in this life, you're going to be tempted. I know some of y'all are super holy. You got halos over your head and you can rebuke and cast out devils and speak in all kinds of tongues and I know you got it going on. Some of us want to be just like you, but I need you to understand you're going to be tempted and tested in this life. And so notice, Jesus is getting ready to walk into his ministry, and the first thing that happens to him is that he's tested. That's why before you start doing something major in your life, you got to look for yourself to be tested at the very beginning. Because you, if you crumble at the very beginning, it the enemy does not even have to wait for you down the line, right? And so Jesus is going to start his ministry. Let's see how Jesus is handling the situation. Amen? Amen. Now, the Bible says in Luke 4, verse 1, right? Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. Why is Jesus full of the Holy Spirit? I just told you when he was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down upon him, right? And because he had the Holy Spirit, he's walking in that power. 
Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, he left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, the wilderness does not necessarily have to mean the desert, but the wilderness is in isolation. He's left, he's left, led to be isolated, right? And what's, and he's about to be tested because what do we say? If your faith can't be tested, your faith can't be trusted, right? Now, he's led by himself. I'm talking to somebody right now that feel like you by yourself, right? When you by yourself, you got to understand that is an opportunity for God to do a work in your life. When you are led by yourself, that's an opportunity. And that's why you got to know how to speak to your own self, right? Because you by yourself, the pastor may can't get to you. Missionary may not can get to you, right? But even by yourself, you got to be able to speak to your own self in your own situation, what your God can do. So Jesus is led, right, into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. So not only is he uh, led, right, by the devil, and he's been able to identify with us because we're going to be tempted, right? And so for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. 40 days he was tempted by the devil, right? As long as you walk in Christ, you're going to be tempted. Now, the Bible says during those days and at the end of them, he was hungry. He had not eaten for 40 days and then the enemy shows up. Amen. When you're most vulnerable, the enemy will show up. Amen. Right? When you're down to your last dollar, that's when somebody going to call you trying to get you to go outside of your own way and do something a little shady, right? It's going to be more tempting, right, when you're down to your last dollar, right? When you're super hungry, that's when somebody, and you're fasting, right, trying to eat healthy, that's when somebody on your job going to bring you a whole bunch of donuts. Amen. Amen. When you most vulnerable, right, late night, right, <laughs> Amen. That's where you're going to get that text from that person you ain't talked to in months. Amen. When you are most vulnerable, the enemy is going to show up. Amen. And it does not mean the enemy does not show up when you're not most vulnerable. Amen. But when you are most vulnerable, the enemy will show up. And if the enemy showed up to Jesus when he was most vulnerable, surely the enemy going to show up where you and I are. Right? And so watch this in verse 3. The devil said to him, and notice the Bible says the devil. It does not pretty it up and says the enemy. It says the devil. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. If you, you cannot translate that to mean the devil did not know who he was. Because if you are the son of God, Bible scholars suggest really means since you are, since you are the son of God. So it's not if you are the son of God, it's since you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Amen. That's the first time that Jesus was tempted or tested. Amen. If you are, since you are the son of God, turn, tell this stone to become bread. Now, notice, even the enemy knows your power because the enemy does not say, turn this stone into bread. The enemy says, tell this stone to become bread. I'm here to tell somebody, you got power in your words. Your miracle, in fact, is in your mouth. That's why right now you ought to be able to open up your mouth and declare that I will be blessed in this situation. In this new season of life, I shall be blessed. In this new season of life, God will bless me and he's going to put a little peace on it. And so I'm not going to be stressed out of my mind. I'm not going to let none of these devils and none of these witches and none of these imps drag me back to the old me. I'm walking into this new season blessed and highly favored. Amen. You got that kind of power. The enemy says, tell the stone to become bread. Test it. And the Bible says in verse 4, and Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live, what? On bread alone. That's the word. That's that eight, that's that Deuteronomy 8.3. Jesus is tempted. Jesus is tested 
But Jesus responds back with what? The word. Right? That's why you got to know the word. Right? The enemy going to put you in a whole lot of twists in life. Right? The enemy going to try to trip you up, trip you up. The enemy going to try to do many things to you. And you got to respond with the word. Now, notice Jesus responds with the word. He does not respond with any kind of swear words, cuss words. He does not uh, respond with any kind of doubt. He does not respond with any kind of street slogan. He does not respond with any kind of slang. Jesus hit the enemy right back with the word. And that's why when you're going through your situation, you got to hit the enemy right back with the word. When confusion is popping off in your life, you got to understand, you got to hit the enemy with the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When you don't know what's going on in your life and the enemy keeps putting you in one storm after another storm, you got to hit the enemy with goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You got to hit the enemy with the word, y'all. Jesus hit the enemy with the word, right? Don't get tripped up trying to hit the enemy with, with any kind of uh, carnal, carnal, amen, carnal stuff. Hit the enemy with the word. The battle you are not facing are a spiritual battle, right? He hit the enemy up with the word. said, man shall not live on bread alone. Then the devil led him up, verse 5. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him an instance all the king, kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I'll give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will be all yours. Listen, when you see verse four, the first thing the enemy is going to try to trip you up. The enemy is going to try to trip you up based off of your identity. Amen. The enemy first move in your life is going to try to trip you up off your identity. Right? That's the first thing the enemy does. The enemy wants you to think less of yourself. The enemy wants you to get confused about who you really are. Right? And that's why when people talk slick to you, your critics and your haters, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to come for your identity. You not all that. You think you all that. Right? They're trying to come for your identity. Right? They want you to stop thinking of yourself as the head. Right? They want you to stop thinking of yourself as blessed, right? The first thing the enemy, and then the second thing the enemy is going to do is to question your ability. That's why it says, if you are the son of, if you are the son of man, the son of God, turn this stone into bread. If you are the son of God, the identity, turn this stone into bread, your ability. The second thing the enemy wants you to do is lose you. The fact that you have ability. Right? Now then the enemy goes and try to trip you with lies. Deception. Because the enemy says, I can give you splendor. The devil cannot give you anything. I'm going to hear you tell you. The devil, can, the devil does not have power to give you anything. Right? He has no power to give you anything good. Amen. Let me fix that. He does not have any, any power to give you anything good. In fact, anything that the devil does in your life is at the passive aggressiveness of God. Right? God takes his hand off of you and allows the enemy to do some stuff to you or for, or for you. And then he, God says, okay, enough. Right? Turn back to me and let's whip this devil for, and, and then we're going to, you know, keep it moving. Right? And so he tells, he tells him, I can give you all of this. Just bow down and worship me. When the enemy really trying to confuse you, the enemy is going to try to confuse your worship. Amen. Right? When the enemy really comes for you, the enemy is going to try to trip up your worship. And that's why I'm so glad in this whole pandemic and stay at home, we've learned that you don't have to get to the sanctuary in order to worship God. We've learned right where we are in our PJs, right where we are. At right there in the bath, bedroom, right there in the living room, we can give God the glory. In fact, my spirit tells me somebody right now at home, you having a Holy Ghost party right there at your house. You giving God the glory. You giving God some praise. You letting God know that you realize if it had not been for him on your side, you would be jacked up. Your whole family would be jacked up. Y'all would be on the street crying and begging. But yet God's been so merciful to you, right? The enemy is going to try to trip up your worship because if whatever you worship is whatever you give your attention to. Amen. 
Amen. Whatever you worship is whatever you give your attention to, right? And that's why if the enemy can trip up your worship, the enemy can grab your attention. And if the enemy can grab your attention, he'll keep you distracted from your purpose. Amen. And so he says, if, 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 if you worship me, it'll be all yours. And Jesus responded, what? It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. He tried to trip him up. And once again, Jesus came back with the word. I'm telling you, some of y'all so stressed out because you're trying to fight a spiritual battle using carnal stuff. Right. You're trying to fight a spiritual battle using intellect. Right. And you can't reason with people that are using uh, ignorance. You can't reason with people that that don't think cognitively. Right. And so you 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 frustrate. You go into bed frustrated, right? You sit you sitting on somebody's therapist's chair because you're frustrated because you're fighting a spiritual battle using carnal means. You better learn how Jesus, when he tested, Jesus hit people back with the word. And see, when you know the word, you can go right back at the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I would sin not. That's why, amen. That's why real talk, real talk, right? You pay all them bills at that house. And can't nobody do nothing at your house unless you say so. You the shot caller and the big baller at that house. Can't nobody burn no bath and body uh, a candle unless you like the scent. I mean, that's how much of a shot caller you are at your house. You all that at your house. But yet on Saturday morning when them Jehovah Witnesses knock on your door, you kneeling and ducking, telling everybody to be quiet, cut the TV off, push it on mute because you don't know the word. If you knew the word, you would open up that door and say, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Right? But you don't know the word. So you ducking and dodging, telling the kids to be quiet and cut that TV off, put that PlayStation up, because you don't know the word. If you knew the word, hit them right back with the word. When they say something, hit them right back with the word. You don't know the word. You ducking and dodging, telling everybody to be quiet, cutting down that Bobby Jones. Lord, help. Right? You got to know the word of God. And so what? Verse 9, the Bible says, And the devil led him to Jerusalem and had him sit on the highest point of the temple. And he says, If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Notice this. The devil takes him to Jerusalem, the holy city, right? And had him stand at the highest point of the temple, right? Nobody's there, right? Because the Bible says in verse 1, where the spirit of God led him to the wilderness. And we taught last week that the wilderness is a, a, a low uh, populated area. Nobody's there but Jesus and the devil. And the devil keeps taking him higher. Every mountain you climb higher, there's going to be a new devil. I'm talking to somebody tonight. In fact, I'm encouraging myself. Every, every level you climb higher, there's going to be another devil. Right? So, so that's why you got to be careful. God, give me discernment. Because when God blow you up and glow you up, you got to understand the next level going to have another devil. And the next level going to have another devil. And the next level going to have another devil. Now watch this. He goes back to questioning his identity. If you are the son of God, you know I'm the son of God way back in verse 4. But yet, once again, you're trying to question, you're trying to get me to question my identity. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written. When you turn your Bibles to Psalms 91, somebody turns to Psalm 91. When you turn your Bible to Psalms 91, 11, and 12, man, you're going to be surprised what you see. When you turn your Bible to Psalms 91 and read verse 11 and verse 12, what does it say? Verse 11, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Man, what I'm trying to tell you and get you to see tonight, even your enemy, even the devil knows the word of God. Shame on you if you allowing the devil to know more the word of God than you. Right? 
And you will see that the enemy will use the word of God in order to trip you up. That's why you got to know the word of God. Y'all recall when we was getting around uh, the Advent season, the person came online trying to trip y'all up on Bible study. But we had already taught the week prior and let you know they're going to take you to that passage where you're not worshiping no tree. You worshiping the birth of Christ. I told you that the enemy knows the word. You got to know the word. And the enemy going to try to use the word to trip you up. Right? Because the enemy quoted verse 10 and 11 here is Psalm 91, 11 and 12. Right? So you got to know the word. Because if you don't know the word, right? And that's why the oil, the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will give you discernment. The Holy Spirit will, will, will give you power. The Holy Spirit will give you a fresh wind. The prop, because some of us try to, we can be doing carnal stuff. Let, let's, let's go there tonight, y'all. Some of us can be doing carnal stuff and we can do it all day and all night long. Amen, somebody. You can be doing carnal stuff, right? Some of us can watch a three-hour movie. Amen. Malcolm X. Because we like Denzel and we think he's sexy. We can watch that movie all day long. Three hours. Amen. And love it. Coming to America. We can watch it. Amen. Love it. Soon as we open up our Bible. We read the first verse. Ooh, I'm so tired. Ooh, Ooh I'm so tired. Right? So the first verse. <laughs> you ain't read not a chapter. You read a verse. Ooh, I'm so tired. Ooh, I'll get you this in the morning. You're not going to read it, right? Because the enemy knows if you empower yourself, then you will defeat the enemy. And that's why the enemy comes for you in those moments, right? That's why you got to, you got to pray up. You got to pray up before you read the word of God. I'm going to give you a little insight. Always pray before you read the word of God. Don't read the word of God and then pray. Pray and then read the word of God. Because if you pray and then read the word of God, It'll get you in a mindset and a mode to hear God. Amen. Right? It'll give you fresh revelation. Right? Don't, don't. That's why, that's why in the service, amen, in the service, we pray before we read the word of God. I'm not talking about no other church. I'm talking about here at the city. We're going to pray, right? And then we're going to read the word of God. Because when we pray, we ask God to open up our minds, open up our hearts, open up our spirits, that we might get fresh revelation in the word of God. Amen? Amen. And so the Bible says in verse 12, Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord of God to the test. That's Deuteronomy 6 and that's Deuteronomy 6 and 16. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Once again, Jesus answered the word with the word, right? And notice the Bible says, do not put Jesus to the test. Malachi is the only scripture where God said, prove me or test me, right? It does not say you cannot question God. Amen, right? We Many of us miss that or we get that twisted. You can question God without being questioning to God. Because what you are questioning is the what. You're not questioning the who. Right? But the text says, do not put God, don't test God. Don't test God. Let God be who God is. Now look at verse 13, because some of us got to hear this. Verse 13 says, when the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. I, I'm here to tell you, I, I wish I had, I wish I could tell you different, but I can't. I'm here to tell you that the enemy is never going to stop coming for you. I know some of y'all say, don't come for me unless I sin for the enemy going to keep coming. Even when you don't sin for the enemy, the enemy is going to keep coming, right? Because look at the text. The text says that the enemy tried three times to trip up Jesus and it didn't work. But what, what does verse 13 say? When, when, the, when the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until the enemy, he told him himself in Job when he says, I just fly back and forth seeking who, who, whom it is I can devour. You're never going to get rid of all your enemies. Amen. I'm talking to somebody tonight. I'm talking to myself. You're never going to get rid of all your enemies 
But with God's help, you can fight them all. Amen. When God help, you can defeat them all. But you never going to, the enemy is going to always be lurking. Right? The enemy, that's why you can get the family together. and You can get your family together. Watch this. You can get your family together. Y'all been fussing and fighting about this and that for years. And somebody pray and the Holy Spirit come down. And everybody acting on one accord. It could even be at a funeral. It don't even really matter. Everybody acting on one accord. Y'all leave there. Y'all crying about the, the, the loved one that passed on. But at the repast while y'all eating the chicken and drinking out of them red cups, everybody feeling good. Everybody feeling good. Right? Y'all all on one accord. Amen. Right? The enemy has tried y'all. Couldn't win. Amen. And then somebody going to do something that's going to set it all off. Somebody going somebody to say something that's going to, somebody going to have too much seven up in that cup. Amen. And they're going to set it off. Right? Just waiting on the opportune time to bring it all the way down. And that's why the Bible says what men and women ought to always do what? Pray. Right? You are, in good times, you ought to be praying. When things are working out in your life, you ought to be praying. When you see your children uh, uh, being transformed and going to the next level, don't stop praying, right? When you see your marriage and your relationship going to the next level, don't stop praying, right? When you see your career going to the next level, your dreams coming together, some of your resolutions that you had for a year coming together, don't stop praying because the enemy is always lurking, waiting for the opportune time to come and snatch you up. And the opportune time, let's go all the way back to the first part. The opportune time is when you're going to be hungry, when you're going to be most vulnerable, right? When you're going to be tempted. That's the opportune time that the enemy is going to show up. Amen? So always pray. Now, the Bible says in verse 14, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. Now, he was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. Now, you should know that uh, when uh, Solomon's temple was destroyed and the Israelites were exiled, when they came back, yes, they rebuilt the temple, but they also had synagogues. It was almost as if the temple was like a main building. Amen, right? But they didn't always want to go to the main building, so they built up smaller Worship centers. Amen. It's almost as if like our church is a, is a worship center, right? But we all go to a main building every now and then and worship all together. Amen. And so the synagogues were where uh, they worship on the Sabbath. People was, was able to go to the synagogue and hear a word. And the Bible says that Jesus is in there preaching in the Holy Spirit. He's preaching and teaching in the Holy Spirit and everyone praised him. Now, this is, this is, and the Bible says he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. As was his custom. I mean, Jesus, uh, unlike many of us, Jesus went to the, he went, he came, he went to church, y'all. He went to church. And Jesus was not one of those where he come in every now and then, right? He, he went to church. It was his custom, Right? I don't know about you, but if you profess to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, it ought to be your custom that you are in worship. Amen. And don't be that kind of believer that wait till Sunday to be in worship. Every day I, want, I try to be in worship with God. And that's why I don't wait till I get to church on Sunday morning, right? I get it in wherever I'm at. I get it in, right? It was his custom to go to worship. Amen. And look, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Amen. And, and he went into the synagogue as it was his custom and he stood up to read. That's a shout right there. Because you recall what, what, did, what did Nathaniel says? Can anything good come out of what? Come out of Nazareth. Right? That was almost when Jesus was born. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now some years have passed. Now he's 30 years old and he's going back. I stopped by to tell somebody that when God has blessed you and when God has laid his hands on you, you're going to go right back to the same situations where people doubted you and they're going to see how blessed you are. 
When God has his hands on you, he's going to put you in the same environment that thought you would not be anything so that they can see how the power of God has resonated and moved in your life. Amen. Amen. When God has his hand on you, he's going to put you in some environments that's been thinking low of you. Amen. So that the people can see how blessed you are. And you are blessed. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit operating in you and on you. Amen. And so the text says that as was the custom, he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, this is Jesus recalling Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. That means because I have the spirit of, of the Lord upon me, I can do what y'all necessarily don't think I can do. And because I have the spirit of the Lord upon me, I can speak truth to power. Now notice, look at the dimensions that he speaks. It lets us know that Jesus, our God, has a favorable eye on those of us that are considered outcasts. He has a favored eye on those of us who are considered the low, low on the totem pole the least and the lost and the left behind and the underserved and the unserved, right? Because look at it. He does not say anything in this text. He does not say I'm coming for the high and mighty. He says he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to what? The poor and not the necessarily monetarily poor. It's the poor in spirit. Those who have been down so long that getting up is not even on your mind. He has he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor, right? That, that The good news. Jesus is not coming to speak more destruction to those that are pure in spirit. He's coming to speak power to those that are pure in spirit. When God crossed your path with people that are poor in spirit, when God crossed your path with people that are a little discouraged, do you speak good news into them? Amen. Or do you keep up the same old, it'll never happen, it, it, it won't happen, it can't happen. Or do you speak with a renewed mind, right? And he says, he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoner, freedom from those who are bounded. When you encounter people that are bounded, and understand many of us are prisoner without a jail. Many of us are prisoners of grief. We're prisoners of the depression. We're prisoners of bad choices. We just keep making one bad choice after another. We are prisoners of a lack of discernment. We know they're a snake. They've shown us all the symptoms and all the attributes of a snake. But yet we have an affinity for keeping them around. Prisoners of bad choices. Amen. He sent him to proclaim freedom. It's time for you to leave that stuff and move to the next level. I stopped by tonight to tell somebody, it's time for you to leave some stuff in your life that's got you bound and move to the next level. Amen. You have been holding on to that stuff long enough. It's time for the, we say to break the shackles, but some of us don't want to break the shackles. Some of us don't want to, I know Tasha Cobb, some of us, some of us don't want to sing Tasha Cobb's song. We don't want to break every chain. We want to keep some chains connected to some dead weight. You better learn how to snap that chain. You better learn how to go get some boat colors and cut that chain, right? Break the chain. And he says, to set the oppressed free and recovery of sight for the blind, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I need you to know that when you read your Bible, your Bible declares in Leviticus 25, 8 and like 50. 8 and 50. Leviticus, right down. Leviticus 25, 8 and 50. The Bible says that for about 50 years, seven cycles of seven years, right? You could be going through a rough period. You made bad choices and you got 
in bondage. You made bad choices and you got in, in, a, in a state of oppression. You made bad choices and somebody was ruling over you. But the Bible says every 50 year, it ought to be a year of the Lord's favor. That's where all debts are canceled. All property that you owe is canceled. Right? The money you loan somebody in the 50th year, year, you're supposed to cancel it. That's why some people ain't paid you back right now. Because they read that passage in Leviticus and they're waiting for that 50th year. The, the Bible calls it the, the year of Jubilee. That's why you ain't got your money. So don't even trip now. Now you know why you ain't got your money. They wait for that year of Jubilee. It's supposed to all be canceled. Right? And in the year, that 50th year, it's supposed to be the year of the Lord's favor. That means all your debts are canceled and you're supposed to be going to the next level. All your debts are canceled. You're supposed to be moving higher. I, I, don't, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I declare I'm speaking over somebody's life. I pray that 2021 is your year of jubilee. Amen. And we may not all be on the 50th year cycle, but I pray one or two of us are walking into our year of jubilee. I just pray one of us, because if one of us can get to our year of jubilee, you might can rise up all of us. Right? The high tide rise all ships. I pray that somebody is walking in your year of jubilee. I pray that this is the year that everything you set your hands to will be blessed. I pray that this is the year that you're going to be blessed and you're going in and then you're coming out. I pray that this is going to be the year that you're going to be blessed and everybody connected to you is going to be blessed. And it's not going to just be a temporary blessing. It's going to be so large and so overwhelming. The overflow is going to be generational. I, I D-double dare you to just begin to speak over your life right now. This is my year of jubilee. In fact, go ahead and type it on the screen right now. This is the year of jubilee over my life. I declare it and I decree it that God can bring it to pass. This is the year I'm going to be blessed and highly favored. This is the year the spirit of the Lord will be upon me. And every encounter of anybody, I will speak life. Every encounter of anybody, I will speak a blessing. Every encounter of anybody, I will declare what God can do. This is the year that my family will come together. This is the year there will be no drama. There will be no stress. This is the year that we will come on one accord and it will not take a home going celebration. This is the year that son will get along with father and mother will get along with daughter and niece will get along with nephew. This is the year that the cousins will come together. This is the year that my children will turn around. This is the year that our communication will go to the next level. Our health will go to the next level. Our spiritual life will go to the next level. This is the year that we will move in wisdom. We're not going to move in ignorance. We're not going to move in fear. We're not going to move in anxiety. We're going to walk in the authority of wisdom. This is the year that God's going to bless us with peace. We're not going to allow for those that's coming for our peace to bring us down. We're not going to allow for those of us who want to drag us into the mess of life to bring us down. This is not the year that we're going to be preoccupied with the stuff that don't really matter. This is the year we're not going to major in the minor. This is the year we're going to stand still and let God be God. This is the year that we're going to keep our joy. This is the year our minds going to be renewed. This is the year that God's going to create in all of us a clean heart and renew a right spirit. This is my year of jubilee. I declare it and I decree it that God can bring it to pass. I don't care what you say. I don't care what they say. I care what the word of God says because this is what I believe. I dare you to declare that right now in the name of Jesus. This is the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. Amen. And somebody might say, well, y'all talking as to, man, I'm telling you, I'm talking Bible. I'm talking Luke 4 and 19. This is the year of the Lord's favor. I don't, I'm not believing, I'm not believing in anything that's contrary to that. I don't, I'm not believing in anything that's contrary to that. This is the year of the Lord's favor. And I, and I want you to get to the point where you don't even look for the favor to be all, all about the tangible stuff. Amen. I'm talking to somebody tonight. You don't even look for it all to be about 
money and cars and all of that. Because you can have money and cars and be hooked up with a dummy and stressed out of your mind. Amen. 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 This is the year of the Lord's favor where God's going to, he's going to marry the tangible with the intangible. And so when he blessed me with some things, I'm going to be connected and around the right folk. Amen. I'm going to be able to go to crustacean like some of y'all and everybody at my table going to be my type of person on one accord, equally yoked. Ain't nobody going to be trying to compete with one another. Amen. Ain't nobody going to be looking who put extra cheese on the noodle. Amen. We're going to be at the table eating good, relaxing, enjoying, not compete with one another. Amen. And we're going to leave there and all go home and work it all. Amen. Amen. This is the year of the Lord's favor because the Holy Spirit, the oil is upon me. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 20 says, then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. In scripture, let me, let's teach y'all. Now notice in verse 17, the Bible says he grabbed the word and he stood up. Amen, right? Verse 20 says he rolled the scroll and he sat down. That's why in church, I'm just teaching you your Bible. That's why in church we stand up for the reading of God's word. Because we're mimicking Jesus in the synagogue. I know you're going to say, why do we stand up? And I don't even like that preacher and he got us standing up. Why do we do that? We're trying to mimic Jesus. In the synagogue, he stood up, amen, and he read the word of God, amen, and he sat down, amen, and put the word away, right? So the next time a preacher says, will you please stand up for the reading of God's word? It's not that, you know, the preacher think he got power. He's trying to get us to mimic Jesus, amen? Amen. I'm just teaching you your Bible. So now you know. So I don't want you to be ignorant about the word of God. Now you know. So the text says, the eyes of everyone in the synagogue was fastened on him. Verse 21. And he began by saying to them, today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, the scripture is fit, fulfilled in your hearing. Today, Bible scholars suggest that what's been said right there is today, the scripture he just read has been fulfilled in the hearing because in the church was the demographics of what he had just spoken to. That's why at, at the church, we got to be welcoming of everybody. Y'all recall two weeks ago when they taught us, well, are you going to treat the one like President Obama and you're going to treat the other one like a sinner? Or are you going to treat them both the same? Because we got to be welcoming of everybody that comes in the house of God. And what the text is saying, that day at the synagogue was the pool. That day at the synagogue was people that were in prison. That day in the synagogue was people that were blind. That day in the synagogue was people that needed to be set free, right? And so at the church, everybody got to be welcome. Amen, somebody. In the church, everybody got to be welcome, right? right? Because you may say, I don't. I don't really have any of these things or any of these attributes in my life. Amen? I'm going to tell you like this. Keep on living. Keep on living. Keep on living. Amen? Keep on living and what you will discover. Amen? Amen? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about some stuff that you suffer from. We'll talk about some stuff that tempt you. Right? Gambling may not tempt you, but I got something that will tempt you. Amen? Amen? And so he says, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Verse 22, and all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? They asked, I'm going to end on verse 22. We're going to stop. Now watch this. The text says, all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Now earlier I told you, it was thought. Nothing can good, good can come out of Nazareth, right? Why did Jesus chose a boy from Nazareth in order to be the Savior? Amen, right? And Jesus is gone, right? And come back 30-some years later. Amen. And he blessed them. Watch this. He blessed them by speaking a word into them. He blessed them by giving them the word, right? 
He has anointed me to proclaim the good news. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, right? He blessed him. Let me tell you something. Everybody will not be able to see the blessing that you are in their life. I'm going to say that again. I, I pray this is not the case, but sadly it is. There's going to be some people in your life that will only take. And what you need to understand is only givers get tired. I'm talking to myself tonight. Only givers get tired. There are takers in your life. They're going to take. They're never going to get tired of taking. They never gonna. They never gonna get tired of it. They never gonna get tired of taking. They gonna take, and they gonna try to rob you of everything. They gonna rob you of the tangible stuff. They gonna rob you of your joy. They gonna rob you of your peace. There are some takers. If I wasn't holy, I'd say something. That, there are some takers that's gonna never get tired in life. Amen. Amen. And 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 watch this. Here's how you know that Jesus was surrounded by that type. Because instead of blessing him and speaking holy on him, they say, isn't this Joseph's son? Isn't this Joseph's son, the one we heard was a carpenter? How is it that he's speaking truth to power like this? They want to bring up his past and they want to bring up the rumors instead of walking in the blessing. I'm telling you, y'all, everybody's not going to be able to accept the fact that you're blessed and highly favored. And because you know this, don't waste your life trying to prove to people how good of a person you are. Amen. Let your works and let your deeds speak for you. Amen. 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 And praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God for this word on tonight. Next week, we'll be in Luke 5. Luke 5. And so we ask that you uh, prepare your hearts and minds that we might read Luke 5 and be blessed by the word of God. Once again, this is a good opportunity for you to join the city of David. If you want to join the city of David, just go ahead and type all in. Amen. And you can join our church and we'll, we will reach out to you. I need you to understand that they tell me uh, that we crossed over the 200 member mark on Sunday. Amen. 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 We crossed over the 200 member mark on Sunday. And so I'm just super duper excited about what God is doing here at the city of David. Amen. And so go ahead and let's begin to type the names on the screen. And if you're listening, while before we do that, if, if you know somebody in your family is a person that's, that's typed all in in one of the previous weeks, just ask them, did you receive a form from us? Amen. They tell me somebody's typing all in. Amen. Ask them did they receive the form because we go right back on the on the on the status where you type all in and we put the link and we need that information in order to reach out to you. Amen. So if you know somebody, a friend or a family member has joined the church by saying all in, just ask them have they received the form so that we can do our due diligence and being able to reach out to them. Amen. Amen. Come on and type the names on the screen. Let's begin to uh, praise God for the one person that's typed in all in on tonight. We give God the glory and the honor and the praise. But let's begin to type the name of the people that are uh, that we that on the screen that we need to pray for. We are continually lifting up the Fluker family and the Rose Barrel family and the Gilmore family. And we're continually lifting up my friend, Reverend Teddy Payne. Amen. We're lifting up uh, Brother uh, Sammy Davis and Mother Hattie. I believe they're out of this quarantine period. Olethea Jones and Leon Smith, we're still calling your name. Uh, Gina Canada and her family, we're calling your name. Um, Monique and Sandrea Redman, Wanda and Kia Anderson, uh, Sister Roxanne Martin, we're calling your name. Um, my friend Felicia Walker and her family, we're calling your name. Sister Hazel Caldwell, I'm lifting up Sister Marilyn Washington uh, on tonight. I'm lifting up Gus Briscoe on tonight. Amen. So begin to just type in the names on the screen right now that you want us to cover in this corporate prayer. I just still believe in the power of prayer. Amen. 
Amen, amen, and praise God. Let us pray. Uh, merciful God, we come before you on tonight to say thank you, Lord. We come before you, God, to give you glory and honor and praise God, thanking you for the atmosphere that you have set on tonight, that we studied your word, God, and became more wiser about what you are saying in scripture, God. Now, God, in print and place this word in our heart that, that we may move forth, God, realizing that we need to know the word of God in order to fight the many tests of life. Help us to be boldly when we declare the word of God that it may be used against the enemy, God. God, I declare right now that we want the oil. We want the Holy Spirit, God, that so we can walk in the newness of life, God, that we can have the power and the discernment, God, to move and operate, that we can have the power, God, to lay hands on the sick, that we can have power, God, to tell the mountains in our life to move and watch those mountains move. We thank you, God, right now, God, and we give you glory for the increase that came on tonight, God. We thank you for our new family member, God. We owe you and you alone all of the praise and all of the honor, God. Because it was you, God, that gave us the increase on tonight. And so we praise you on tonight, God, for every name of every family and every member that we've called out tonight, God. We put place them in your hands, God, realizing that you can do far more abundantly with them, God, than what we ever thought, dream, or imagined. Walk into that situation, God. Have your will and have your way be done, God, and we will give you glory. We will give you the honor and we will give you the praise. Thank you, God, for this week ahead. God, I pray right now that you would pull your oil out on us, God. We are on heaven's door asking and seeking and knocking, God, believing that the doors will open, God. Believing that you will pour out a double portion of your love, strength, and power, God. Keep us in perfect peace, God, as we keep our minds stayed on you, God. I come against any agent of the enemy right now, God, that's coming for our peace. I come against any witch or imp, God, that's coming to try to bring us down and confuse us about our identity, confuse us about our ability, and confuse us about our worship. I declare and decree, God, that you would send angels to be a hedge fence of protection all around us. Guide us, O thou great Jehovah, which are pilgrims in this old barren land. We are weak, but thou art mighty. Hold us with your powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, continually to feed us till we want no more. We love you, God, and we adore you. We magnify you, God, and we exalt you. In Jesus' name, we declare, amen, amen. And praise God. Thank you, family, for joining us on tonight. Once again, next next week we'll be in Luke 5. And watch this. On this Saturday, Dr. Hogan is coming for our conversation at the city at 11 o'clock a.m. The information is on our church page. Come on, let's all get on one accord that we may learn and gather wisdom. That we may walk into this new season declaring that we will live and not die and declare the wondrous works of the Lord. I love you much. Have a blessed week. God bless you.